Hey guys, um, this is my first reaction to anything really. Um, welcome to my channel. I hope it grows as the weeks go on. This is going to be my first reaction to Dr. Hill. I don't have the software to do picture in picture. I have tried all sorts. As you can see, I'm trying something a bit different. He's the clumsiest person I know. I'm not. So sorry for all of us. No. 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 I'm going blue. I hate trouble. This is us two left. Looking back at it, I always wanted to do YouTube for quite a long time. I'd just finished a shift, a 10 hour shift I think, and then I headed home. Doctor Who was on TV tonight and my boyfriend at the time, he was out, he was away. That's when I decided to start. I decided to make my first YouTube video. Nah, I've, I've had enough of that cheesy corny crap. Right, move on. Hello and welcome to my five year celebrations. Who knew this were coming? Today marks the day five years ago when I did my first YouTube video inside a small house with not a care in the world, so innocent and so much time on my hands. Posted it, went out, still carried on. And pfft baffles me to be fair. Now I know that my YouTube channel is not one of the most popular, fully aware of that, but I don't want it to be because simply the people that I've got around me I consider as a really close family. That's cheesy. Close knit of friends? Yeah? Close. It's been a mess, I will be honest. It's been an absolute mess these five years. You've watched me get drunk make a tea to myself and yeah cry uh, who can forget that crying video i have done so much on this channel like from doctor who to gameplays to making my own doctor who episode crying again music videos the lot i've done all sorts but i genuinely wouldn't done it if it weren't for the people that's watching from everyone that's literally stuck around and commented on videos kept people commenting amongst themselves. I know a couple of people that's watching these videos that talk amongst themselves. Like, what's weird about YouTube, and it's the great thing as well, is YouTubers to kind of stick together. Um, I've met a couple of real, real close personal friends from it. Um, and I will talk about that in a moment, but for now, I just want to move on and just explain what's going on. So I have prepared many surprises in this video. I have not explained to anybody even my close friends, what I'll be doing here. But I have prepared a few different treats for you to watch. Now, I won't get into what they are because it's all going to come up as it goes. I was going to upload all, the, all of these separately, but I decided against it. And yeah, I thought I'd just make one big, huge video. Um, no idea how long this is going to last. So yeah, you'll find out what they are as this episode continues. Um, I really wanted to do like a live stream of it so people can talk amongst themselves as the, the whole thing's going. So like, I may post the videos that you're about to see separately over the next coming weeks or whatever. I don't know. I might not. But you know, like the, the things in here I do think is like real treats. 
So yeah, I, I just hope you enjoy them all. But I would like to say like five years ago when I first started, I would not have known that I'd still be doing this now. Um, there's been a lot of shenanigans going on. First, before we get into any of that, I want to talk about a couple of different people. So based on what I was talking about, I have made a couple of really good, strong, close personal friends. Um, first off is Dave Hughes, otherwise known as Mooch TV. Um, he's, oh God, he's been there since the start. He's posted loads of videos of me in his content. Like he's got the Doctor Who um, or Doctor You. I had to think about that. Um, he's put like my channel in a lot of them. I've starred in a few of his videos and we do talk quite often as well on Facebook so that that's nice like his friendship means the world to me but there's another person now she messaged me random on Facebook years ago now and like from there we've developed a real close friendship you know like it's a story that I don't think I'll be able to tell again but she genuinely means the world to me I consider her as a best friend her name's Sally Sally Roberts you know hi at the moment of filming this as well, we're currently binging Heartstopper and that, that has my life. That has my life. We're watching it and I'm crying again. Love it. Why am I still talking about that? Because I'm just getting emotional. Wow. Yeah, anyway, so I, I I always know that she's got my back no matter what and I hope she knows that I have too. She's just genuinely a warm, kind, caring, gentle human being that just brings so much joy to people in life. So I kind of wanted to do something a little bit back. Yeah, um, yeah, Sally, you didn't know this was coming. Now, Sally has a condition, it's called Crohn's disease and it's affected her on a day-to-day -day basis throughout all of her life. And I know that sometimes it can be quite difficult for her. So I kind of wanted to do something to raise awareness for it and to donate some money towards the charity that can help people that suffer with this condition. So, here's a trailer. Kind of posted it before, but it's been tweaked a little bit. Here's what's coming. But they never did, ever did, never did, never did, never did, never did, never did, never did, broke up when it rained down. It rained down got that to look forward to very soon i know that it's about two months away and the reason why that is is because i'm really busy at the moment not just with work but filming um there's a couple of treats that i've got coming up and i'm hoping that'll be in fact no i'm not going to say anything because i don't want to put a deadline on it i've just got something else up my sleeve um so bear with on that you're not going to know today let's just move on from that I also wanted to thank every single one of you out there that's still watching these videos, that's still commenting, that's still, you know, spreading the joy on this channel. Like, I really do love the people that's watching. Like you, especially you. You. I find it so wholesome, you know, like people getting excited, sad, merry, whatever you want to call it. I love the, the bones off you. And I know that sounds stupid because I haven't met you and I haven't seen you and I don't know what you look like. But the wholesome content is there. And that's provided by you, not me. I'm just some bloke that sits on the couch getting drunk. That's you. Let's make our way to your next treat. Now, this is a little something that I filmed a couple of weeks ago. Something that I've wanted to do for a while now, but never got around to it. Let me just take me to you, to for previous me. From me to you and me. Oh, just go. I'd like to know how many people actually used to collect these because these were the highlight of my childhood and I regret thoroughly getting rid of them. I made an awful decision, a stupid choice to sell my entire Doctor Who Battles in Time trading cards. Now, currently I'm 27 years old. Don't care how old I am, I want them back but I can't afford it because it's an expensive hobby and I actually had every single one of them. I actually had Super Rose. Now that's a card that is one in every thousand, I think it was. And I got rid of it, sound. But I'm having a flashback. I thought, you know what? I'll just relive some of the best times of my childhood really and just buy a few packs. Now I've only got five. I just wanted to make a little video out of it. 
uh, just to see what I can remember about these cards. So I got the one from one of my favourite sets. It's from um, when they did series three of Doctor Who. It's called Invader. Now each pack, it's seven back. Each pack contains nine cards. The Invader set is made up of 225 cards in total. Now, I think there was about five sets when I started collecting them. Having every single one of them, I think there was well over a thousand. Sad little me, spent every single penny that I could afford on them. But uh, yeah, I remember always getting the super rares and ultra rares to be fair. I doubt we'll find one in these, but you never know. Always worth a try. But yeah, I just thought like, it's just a bit different, you know, like something different to do. I'm gonna be a kid again, so I'm sorry. But yeah, here we go. Let's see what we got. Genuinely has been a very long time since holding some of these. Oh my God! <laughs> we've got a rare one, don't we? We've not even got a super rare mush. All right, I'll save that for the end. Right, okay, so what we got? Wallpaper warning. Valerie Brannigan. We've got a rare solar flower ejection. Cameraman. Oh. Do you know what? It reminds me as well, like these cards, some of them were so pissing random. Like that, you wouldn't really know about him, would you? Like I can't remember him being in the episode at all. But we live, we live and learn. Stasis Chamber. Orange Scannel. Farmer Clark. What else we got? Compensation form. Padra Top Shaft Kane. That's the one. And a carrier knight, super rare. I'll probably get a pound for that on eBay. So let's carry on and see what else we got. Professor, do you know what? It's weird. I actually watched that last night, that episode. Really enjoyed it, looking back at it. Pig Slave, son of mine. Tim Latimer, future kind. Wiggins, it's quite cute actually. We've got Lilith. The Master and Jenny. Oh, lovely. I'm just reliving my youth, and if that's the problem, then yeah, just walk away. It's fine. I don't think we've got another rare, but Businessman, Lady Four. You know, what? I really thought I had that already. Have it now. No, I'm chatting rubbish. Uh, Dev Ashton, Journal of Impossible Things. William Shakespeare, father of mine, Jadoon Trooper, Archangel Network, and Wiry Woman. I don't actually think I've got any duplicates. I thought I had that, but no. Fair enough. Pack number four. I really would like to get an ultra rare, just to relive that again, but I think it, was it one in every 24? Yeah. One in every 24 packs, so I doubt that's going to happen. Tish Jones, Genetic Transfer, Family of Blood Weapon. Lilith again, different card I think. Nobis Hame, Queen Elizabeth I, Traffic Jam, Captain Jack. Oh, I miss you. And Saxon Campaign. I've got nowhere else to put these cards here, so I'm just, whatever. And for the final pack, I don't think there's an ultra rare in this because I've just squeezed it. It needs to be a little bit thicker, but. Uh, right, Leo Jones, Cricket Ball. Escape Pod. Plasma Ball. Lucy Saxon. Sally Calypso. Timey Wimey Detector, Tom Milligan, and Mother Blood Tide. Don't think we've got duplicates. There we are. So I've just gone through all the cards, um, because I'm quite bad at this I put them in order number order that's what I've done uh, gone through them all and I didn't actually get any duplicates which is always a bonus when you're a kid collecting cards when you're a kid. what I've learned during this is like how quality can change do you know like during time so at the time they felt amazing like to collect these cards the quality on them isn't that great though like I thought they'd be way better than this um, no, it's just like, because I do sometimes collect Pokemon cards still, I still do that. Like I know with Pokemon cards you pay that extra bit of money and you get good quality, but that's sort of like what I've got gotten used to now. Um, whereas these just literally feels like cheap card. So that's 
Yeah, I just never really realised that, like, when you're a kid. You don't really care about that sort of stuff, though, do you? But we've got a cheeky super rare. These are genuinely just going to go stashed in my drawer, I know that. But yeah, dude, do you know what? I actually really enjoyed that, and I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I paid £3.49 for these on it, uh, Amazon. I just felt like it'd be a nice uh, trip down memory lane, really. But if you if you were to start collecting these cards again, you can get them quite cheap. Like three pound fifty is quite cheap because it used to be one pound fifty, I think, when they first came out. So yeah, you're saving a bit of money there. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I just hope you've enjoyed this. I just thought it'd be a nice little bonus treat. Still to this day, I don't care how sad I looked on it. Do not care. I enjoyed it. Still got the cards in there, and I am tempted to buy some more. But moving on from that, this is the next video. Hello everybody and welcome to five different TV shows that I think you should totally and absolutely check out. What a nice intro that was. So I've decided on five different shows that not many people, well, no, I'll not go with that. Five different TV shows that aren't actually like obvious to watch. Like we've got Game of Thrones, we've got Sherlock, Obviously Doctor Who, we've got shows like that, but I've chosen five different shows that I think is a little bit unique, like a couple of them are actually quite popular at the minute, but these are five of my genuine top shows out there that I think a lot of you should actually watch. Like, I'll get into why as the list goes on, and I'm going to show you a little clip of each one of them, and I'll tell you where you can watch them as well. Um, but I just thought this would be a nice little addition because currently, and I've said this so many times on the videos that I'm posting today, I am celebrating five years of YouTube. So I'm just throwing out loads of content and hoping that I get at least one person watching. Let's start with spot number five. In this position, I have placed a little TV show out there and it's called Kunk on Britain. Now, Kunk on Britain is a comedy documentary style TV show. Um, it came out a good few years ago now and they're currently working on another um, series. Can't remember what it's called now. I think it's something like Kunk on History or something. I know it's not that. It's not that. It's something like that. But it stars um, Diane Morgan. I had to think about that. Diane Morgan who basically plays Philomena Kunk and it's her interviewing styles and documentary technique is quite unique. All the episodes are actually on YouTube, so you can you can check them out there. Here's a nice little clip for you. But not all Stone's Age things have to be dug up. Some are still visible, which means you can see them. This is Stonehenge, early man's finest achievement. To Stone's Age Britons, this was a cross between Nemesis at Alton Towers in that it was a spectacular attraction and the queue for Nemesis at Alton Towers in that it never fucking moves. Stonehenge was used to tell the time, which means Stonehenge is the only clock you can see from space, unless you have a clock in your spaceship. Eventually, primitive cave boffins discovered new materials. Early man dropped rocks like a stone and got into metal, bronze, and then iron. Iron Man was born. But this Iron Man didn't have superpowers like the Iron Man in films. He couldn't fly or tolerate Gwyneth Paltrow. So instead, he had to go to lengthy measures to defend himself. Luckily, cave boffins had also invented the iron spike. And shortly after inventing the spike, they invented stabbing each other. To make sure they stabbed the right people, Britons formed into primitive gangs called tribes. And like many gangs, they got into graffiti, vandalising the countryside with gigantic doodles, like this badly drawn horse, or this decorative pervert. Before Snapchat, hills were the most efficient way to distribute dick pics to a wide audience. As a result, this site at Cern Abbas became the second crudest hill in British history, after Benny. There's disagreement about how old the Cern Abbas giant actually is, especially since he's still young enough to get wood. What's not in doubt is that he represents the birth of British art, being the biggest example of a noble visual tradition that's echoed down the ages. But this happy land of spikes and hill filth was about to come under threat from something nobody saw coming, Romans. Spot number four is by none other than Russell T Davies. Now, this series came out 
2019, I think it was, I think. And not many people have actually watched it and nobody knows why. Nobody knows why because it was genuinely good. Like if you have a look on the reviews for the series, like it's quite up there. But it's about a family, um, a, yeah, just a normal everyday family really. But the series progresses in the six episodes within like 10, 15 years, I think it is. And it's called Years and Years. It's got Russell Tovey in it. You know, that's always a bonus for us gay fans. And quite a few other famous faces as well. So yeah, it came out ages ago and it just, still to this day, it has a special place in my heart. So I just thought I'd share. Just to clarify as well, like you can watch it on BBC iPlayer, I believe. Um, other than that, I don't actually know where else you can watch it. Yeah, buy the DVD, I guess. <laughs> Here's a clip. Really though, it's, it is like that Rook woman said. Things were okay a few years ago, before 2008. Do you remember back then? We used to think politics was boring. Those were the days. But now, I worry about everything. I don't know what to worry about first. Never mind the government. It's the sodding banks. They terrify me. And it's not even them. It's the companies, the brands, the corporations. They treat us like algorithms while they go around poisoning the air and the temperature and the rain and don't even start me on ISIS. Oh, now we've got America. Never thought I'd be scared of America in a million years, but we've got fake news and false facts. I don't even know what's true anymore. What sort of world are we in? Because <laughs> if it's this bad now, what's it going to be like for you? Huh? 30 years' time, 10 years, five years. What's it going to be like? Second term for President Donald Trump. The president you get, you deserve. Okay, right, so don't laugh. But will you marry me? Oh my god, you're hilarious, Dad. But will you though? Yes! <laughs> yeah. the new island Hong Sha Dao, which means the island of the Red Sands. The date of the general election has been announced as Thursday, May the 5th. I will be standing, yes, it's about time, uh, but I'll be standing as an independent candidate. Hi, Daniel Samuel Lyons. Take you, Ralph, chosen cousins to be my legally wedded husband. <laughs> is one of the most famous TV shows out there in this list um, I've just been obsessed with this show for years like as a gay man I find the role of Villanelle so fucking attractive and this really confuses me I would be quite happy for her to slip my throat I'm not saying something Killing Eve that's spot number three um, you can watch this on BBC iPlayer yet again um, I think it's on like HBO Max or something. I, I might be wrong there, you know. It's dead to me. Now, this is on Netflix. Um, series 3 is literally going to be the last one ever. And this really makes me sad and upset. But this comes out at the later end of this year. Um, I'm just... I can't really say anything about the show. Because 
like if you are wanting to watch it and you don't know what's going on you find out in the first episode and it's a massive plot twist that you just don't see coming um but yeah it's the show is very heartwarming there's a lot of plot twists which is always good in a tv show the music is amazing as well it's just totally my vibe um but yeah and the scene that i'm about to show as well like it's very dramatic like for people that haven't seen the show you will have no idea what's going on but for the two characters that you're about to see these are best friends um and they really do care for each other but they're going through so much and it's just one of the best scenes out there on tv in my opinion so here you are my kids fucking hate me i fucking hate me everybody just fucking hates me i don't hate you could never hate oh you. Oh god, that's because you love anyone who just gives you a morsel of fucking attention, even if it's abusive. It's like you get off on it or something. That's why you love Steve and why you love your shitty fucking asshole mother. You'll just stick around for anybody. Stop, 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 please. Look, I, I didn't mean it, okay? I didn't mean that. No, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, stop. I'm so sorry. Okay, listen, listen, it's okay to be angry. It's okay, you should be fucking irate right now. I deserve that. Don't. You should just punch me in the face, come on, please. No. Come on, hit me, please. No. No, please, just, just punch me in the face. I'm not like you. No, no, please, don't go. Don't go, please, just hit me. Move. Please. I need you to move. Step Get away. Get me. Get out of the way. No. Stop. Move, it. Jen. You can rip me over. Stop it. Hit me. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> Josh, run it. Stop it. And spot number one. Now, they are, this is going around on my Facebook, on my YouTube, everywhere. It's trending so goddamn hard, but it's only trending to the gays. And I want it to trend with everybody else as well because it's got so many important messages in it. Spot number one is Heartstopper. And oh my God, I am literally obsessed with this TV show. Um, the reason being is because I had similar experiences when i was in high school um it's about two guys one of them's gay one of them's straight um or everyone believes that he's straight and it sets the tone of what it's like to grow up in high school um with your sexuality and the two characters just own my heart they really do now what i'm about to show you is a spoiler yeah, it is a spoiler because this happens in episode three, but it's eight episodes long. So you sort of know that what I'm about to show you is coming. Um, it's clear as day when you watch it. Um, but yeah, I couldn't make this list and not include this. You know, it's just so good. And again, I had similar experiences growing up. Not of this scene, because this scene is absolutely wonderful and it makes me cry, but I never, I don't like that. What can I say? Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy this clip anyway. Would you go out with someone who wasn't a girl? I don't know. Maybe. Kiss someone who wasn't a girl. I don't know. Would you go? 
kiss me. So yeah, that's my list. What I want to know is, have you actually watched any of these TV shows? What did you think? And also, what are your five recommendations for TV series that has been out and sort of like, just really moves you or makes you laugh or whatever reason. I want to know five things that you would recommend, five TV shows. So for the next video, I am not going to be hosting this. Like, this is completely new to me. So I'll be watching it all along with you. Um, so this could have been new. Uh, as you probably all know, I did my own Doctor Who episode last year. It's called Dead as Day. Um, but a fellow YouTuber is reacting to it. Most of you know who he is. He's called Dave Hughes, otherwise known as Mooch TV. So get yourselves headed on that way. And this video will continue shortly after. Um, I don't know the times and everything like as I'm filming this so as I'm talking the times will be on the bottom or the top or probably across my face somewhere here so here's the times of when you need to head over to Dave Hughes and here's the times when you need to head over back to mine oh god I sound like I'm coming on to you there but again this is going to be completely new to me he's doing it as a live stream as well so I'll be joining in the comments over there um, and I don't know what he made of it, and I have no idea. Like, it could be treading all over it, and I've got no clue. But please make your way there, because that's where the celebrations continue. And then once the video's finished, um, head on over back onto this channel. I'll be posting this as another stream as well, so you can all join in on the, on the comments again. But yeah, that's halfway through, guys. We're halfway through. What a day. I'll be seeing you very soon enjoy his video so i don't know if i will <laughs> i'm scared all right i'll see you later bye